How do you do y'all? This is John and today I'm counting down my top 10 favorite movies of 2020. Just like my least favorite. These are my personal opinion. Everyone can have their own and if you do not agree with me that's fine. So without further ado let's get started. But first I'd like to have a couple of shout outs real quick. Hillbillyology and Wonder Woman 1984. I really like those movies, but I can think of 10 movies that were better. Number 10. Number 10 on my list is Rebecca. Rebecca is a very interesting romantic thriller. I was not entirely expecting to like it, but I actually ended up doing so. I found the mystery element to be really engaging. I really liked the main character in the movie and she's played wonderfully by a very underrated actress. And also this movie does talk about a few things that normally movies do not talk about. Number nine, Number nine is The Gentleman. Comedies like this movie are very rare. Matthew McConaughey and Charlie Hunnam play really well in this movie as a pair of gangsters in England. And it's also very funny and does not shy away from being politically incorrect at times. But not in, of course, a very wrong and stupid way. Number eight. Number eight is Tenet. How can I not put a Christopher Nolan movie on any of my lists? Tenet is a very good sci-fi movie, very good spy espionage movie, far better than Wasp Network, and it's a complete mind-boggling experience. There's no other way to put it. You know, Christopher Nolan just likes messing with people's heads, and I love it, even though some people don't. Number seven. Number seven is The Invisible Man. I did not really appreciate this movie when it came out. However, I have seen it a couple more times since then, and I've really begun to really like this movie. Granted, I'm still annoyed that they changed the complete plot of the book when adapting into the movie and stuff, but as a movie, I do like this movie a lot more now than I did when I saw it in February. Number six. Number six is The Vast of Night. This is a very awesome sci-fi mystery thriller that came out in May and I've been thinking about it ever since. The Vast of Night was very low budget but it didn't look like it at all. It looked like they spent a lot more money on this movie and that is saying a lot because usually cheap movies you can tell her cheap. This, you cannot. Number five. Number five is Soul. Soul has, well, a lot of soul to it. Soul is another example as to why I love Pete Docter and why he's my favorite Pixar director because he always makes movies like this. Movies with a lot of heart to them. Movies that are very emotional movies that get to you and I love it. Number four. Number four is A Good Woman is Hard to Find. It's not perfect, but it's awesome. A Good Woman is Hard to Find talks about the struggles of being a single parent and everything like that. And not only that, but this woman Sarah Collins has 
to protect her family from gangsters. I'm not a single parent or anything like that, but they do do a lot of things in this movie that helps you relate to this character and understand her struggle. And also, it's just awesome. Number three. Number three is Onward. Movies about brotherhood always, always get me. And if you succeed in it, I will love it. If you fail, I will hate it. Onward succeeded. And it tells this great story of a pair of brothers who just simply want to see their father one more time. And it got to me in a good way. Number two. On my worst movies of the year list, I stated that every year there's a movie that comes out that everyone hates that I love and a movie comes out that everyone loves that I hate. This is the former. Number two is the rhythm section. I loved this movie. I honestly don't understand why so many people hate it, but I loved it. It is one of those few movies that comes out about female empowerment, which is, yes, a great message, but it doesn't bog itself down with social justice narratives or anything like that. It's just simply trying to be a good movie and it succeeds to a great deal. And I own it on Blu-ray. It is behind me right now. Number one. And my number one favorite movie of the year is End of Sentence. This is the most underrated movie of the year. It came out in late May. It took me almost a month to finally see it. For some reason, not a lot of people are talking about it. End of Sentence is a very emotional movie about a father-son relationship, which every guy on this planet has a relationship with their father. And of course, if you and your father are two very different people, like me and my father are, you will understand this movie. You will understand what they're talking about in this movie. My father and I, we're not the same at all. We only have a few real agreements with one another. That's it. However, we still care about each other. And, you know, that's one of the reasons why it's one of, it's my favorite movie of the year because I really could understand what this movie was saying, what they were talking about, all of that. Anyway, those are my 10 favorite movies of this year. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know that you all are probably not going to entirely agree with me, and that's fine. Uh, this is my own personal list with my own personal opinion. If you guys have a different favorite movie, that's fine. Even if it's my least favorite movie of the year. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. Please look forward to to more videos real soon. I am going to do a spoiler talk of Wonder Woman 1984 soon. Uh, after that, I'm going to take a little break for a while. I will start uploading again within like a week or something like that. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Please look forward to more videos real soon. And as always, please remember, the Bodetsky will return. Thank you.